Končno je prišel trenutek, da lahko na oder povabim Aleksisa Ciprasa, podpredsednika stranke Evropske levice, njenega kandidata za predsednika Evropske komisije, ter vodjo največje grške opozicijske stranke Sirize. Hello, comrades and friends. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm very happy that I'm seeing that Strujana Levica is here, strong. I'm very happy to see that left is here in Ljubljana, united and promising as never before in Slovenia. We march ahead. This is not only a new party. This is a political alliance for hope. This is an, an alliance for the people. And this alliance proves that the left exists to unite, not to divide people. And it cannot unite people if it does not unite itself. This is the meaning of Struzen Alevica. And this is the same that we did in Greece with Syriza, the left radical coalition of the left. And our experience is so that when the left unites, it does not simply add forces. It multiplies forces and political impact. And I'm sure that will also happen in Slovenia. Because your efforts springs not from party mechanisms alien to the people, but from the most energetic sectors of Slovenian society. It is rooted not in dark offices, but in the open sea of popular mobilizations. It is the political child of the Slovenian winter of discontent, same time last year. It's a side in motion, and this is your response to the neoliberal zombies who breed corruption, austerity, unemployment, and poverty. This is the response of the social left to the old political establishment, which is withering away in Slovenia, in Greece, in Europe, Next May, in less than 90 days, it will be in our hands to throw them in the history's waste paper basket. Yeah. Dear comrades, next May, each and every citizen in each and every corner of this continent holds our common future in her hands. If they vote left, Europe will turn left. And then the Eurozone crisis could be resolved collectively, fairly, and credibly. And we could pave the way for Europe's balanced and viable growth. We could set the basis for the Europe of employment and justice. We will reject the failed neoliberal recipe for the crisis. Because the Eurozone crisis is a crisis of the neoliberal paradigm. It appears with different but similar phases. As debt crisis in Greece, 
and as a banking crisis in Slovenia. A month ago, Oli Rehn, the commissioner, made it clear that at the beginning of the Greek sol solvency crisis back in 2010, Europe sacrificed Greece in order to save European banks, not in order to save Greece and Greek people. In order to save the Greek banks, but also the other major European banks. So Oli Rehn admitted that the political establishment of Europe didn't want to have Greece's public debt restructured at, at that time. Because then, the European banks would need to pay for their excessive risk-taking with Greek bonds. They chose to cause an unprecedented in peacetime humanitarian crisis in Greece just to save casino capitalism in Europe. And in that way, they forced taxpayers in Greece just to pay for bank profits. And what is happening four years later? Now, they reject direct European stability mechanism, recapitalization of banks. They prefer to lend governments to rescue bankrupted banks at home, at least for the moment, and in that way, they force taxpayers in the South to finance back profits in the South. So, one way or another, they force the South to pay for the banking system of the entire Europe. And I think that this cannot go on. Enforcing bailout and bail-in solutions, or a combination of both, in a recipe for crisis contagion and overall destabilization, and Greece, which in Greece is a systemically important to the Eurozone, cannot be testing ground for a combination of this kind. Nor could Slovenia be that. Looking at the Slovenia, I think that it seems a lot what happened in Greece. I'm afraid that with Slovenia story, the last years, I'm watching a film whose ending I know very well. And the ending is the Troika and the Memorandum. I'm afraid that Slovenia is on the slippery downhill of Greece and privatizing 15 key enterprises will only deprive the country from future income. It, it will not end the banking crisis, which slowly but steadily will evolve into a public debt problem. And unless Europe takes a decisive turn in May, Unless people vote for left and the United Left and the European Left come out of the election as strong as never before, the Troika will step in. But this is not the story of Greece and Slovenia alone. This is the story of the entire European periphery. And if we don't work together, if we don't establish networks of cooperation, if each of us acts alone, we will all lose. We will lose, Mrs. Merkel will win, the neoliberal hegemony will endure, but peoples of Europe will lose. So, 
the United Left of Slovenia, Struja and Alevica, the coalition of radical left in Greece, Syriza, the party of European left, all the democratic and progressive social and political forces, we all have a common task. To pull Europe out of the deep darkness of neoliberalism. <laughs> Dear comrades and friends, never before since the end of the Cold War had Europe been so divided and undemocratic. Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans be, been so suspicious of each other. Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans been so Eurosceptics. This is exactly what motivated my candidacy for the presidency of the European Commission on behalf of the European left. To join forces in order to end austerity and regain democracy. To hold back the social processes that revive nationalist tendencies and xenophobia and inflame right-wing populism and extremists. To reunite people and countries that neoliberalism divides. To force the widest possible social and political alliance against austerity to put forward the solidarity of young women and men, of the working people, of the pensioners and the unemployed in a Europe against the solidarity of the capital. Our solidarity, the solidarity of the people, is the only solidarity that could break through the dichotomy north-south in Europe that could demolish the new wall of money between creditors and debtors that further divides Europe. Creditor countries and debtor countries. So, our candidacy, the candidacy of the European left, it is not a typical one. It is a mandate, let me say, a mandate for hope and change in Europe. Because the Europe we live in, it is not our Europe. This is the Europe of the neoliberal consensus, of the consensus of the conservatives, the liberals, and of the leadership of social democracy. And I'm wondering, 